Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this video today I'm going to show you how I created this Jeff the Killer makeup look. The first thing you're going to need for this tutorial is some type of masking tape. I'm going to be using low tack masking tape which is called painter's tape. You can pick it up from a hardware store for about a dollar and I prefer it over regular masking tape because it doesn't have as much glue in it so it's not as harsh on the skin when you peel it off later on. If you don't have this type of tape you can of course just use regular masking tape so what I'm going to be doing now is flattening down my nose I'm going to be applying lots of strips with a little bit of pressure to push down my nose and I'm going to extend that all the way onto the sides of my cheekbones I'm also going to apply some of the masking tape on the inner corner of my eye area and on the top of my nose and this is also going to change my eye shape as well Next I'm going to take some cotton wool balls and I'm going to use this as stuffing to apply underneath the masking tape to fill in any areas or gaps that obviously aren't going to just blend down nicely into the skin to give myself that look of not having a nose. And then I'm just going to apply some masking tape over the top to give that a nice flat finish. And then I'm going to take some liquid latex and some tissues. I'm going to start applying the latex straight on top of the masking tape area. Because it's such a bright green colour, we're going to need to build up a few layers of latex and tissue to kind of block out that colour as a base so we can paint over it later with a white face paint. Once I've got the tissue on, I'm then going to take a red stippling sponge and I'm going to stipple over the whole entire tissue with some more latex to kind of seal that in place. So it makes it a strong rubbery base as opposed to a soft tissue base. I'm then going to repeat that same step over the entire area where I've applied the rest of the green masking tape. And then once I've done that, I'm going to let it dry for about 5 to 10 minutes or you can speed up the process with a hairdryer. To block out my eyebrows, I'm just going to take a regular piece of the green tape and I'm going to fold both of the sticky sides together so you just have a single piece of masking tape that is not sticky on either side. Once you've got this, I just find it really easy to cut it down to the size of your eyebrow. Then grab two regular pieces of masking tape and just pretty much stick it to your face. This is the quickest, easiest and safest way that I've found to block out my eyebrows whenever I'm doing something so intense that's going to have so much product put on top of the brows anyways. I'm then just going to repeat that same method onto the other eyebrow and then now I've got that base down, I'm going to apply liquid latex straight on top of the brow area and I'm going to repeat the same step that we did with the cheeks. I'm going to fill in all around my eye socket area as well just to make that a nice gradient. I'm going to pop a tissue on my face and then I'm just going to peel off the excess that I don't need. I'm then going to stipple some more latex over the top of that tissue and don't forget to blend it down into the edges of your face. Don't just stop where the masking tape and tissue are. This is what the base should look like. Now I'm going to start building up the cheekbone area with some cotton wool. I'm going to apply some latex onto the tops of the cheekbones. I'm then going to rip up some cotton wool pieces and apply that straight over the top. Building up the cheekbones is really going to help with the illusion of not having a nose. Otherwise, it's very obvious that I've pretty much just put sticky tape on my nose. So I'm going to pop a decent amount of wool on the top of that and then just blend it all down with latex and kind of sculpt it into the shape that I'm after. When it comes to this part, it's kind of just like add a little bit and take a little bit away until you're happy. I just continued to apply some cotton wool and to kind of sculpt it and push it down with my fingers and put it into the shape that I wanted with the latex and then I sealed it straight over the top. It's kind of just a give and take situation to make it suit your face in the way that you have high cheekbones and a really flat nose. I also ran across the top of my brow area again with some latex in a stippling motion because I felt like there was too much of a harsh line. You can also blend that down with some more cotton wool if you like or some more tissue as well. But as you guys can see it's really starting to change the shape of the way the nose is looking once you've got that cheekbone area really built up. After I finished sculpting all of the face I then just set that in place with my hair dryer on a cold setting to finish the drying time and speed it up a little bit. Then I'm going to take my Sazeru Clown White Face Paint and I'm going to paint my entire face, ears and neck. I'm just going to exclude my eye socket area because I'm going to paint that black later on. I also had to do a few layers of this because as you can see the green tape was still visible. After that I went back in with some liquid latex and some cotton wool and I felt like I needed to build up the nose bridge area a little bit more. So I just applied some more cotton wool and sculpted that with my hands to really create that nice flat nose shape. 
But I did try to keep a really mottled appearance of the skin. As you guys can see, it's really chunky and textured. I really feel like that gives it more of a creepy look. So I'm taking a Q-tip and some liquid latex and I'm going to start mapping out the shape of the mouthpiece that we're doing. I'm then going to take some cotton wool pieces and roll them up and pop that straight across that line that we mapped out. I'm then going to take some liquid latex on my fingers and I'm going to start just mushing that together with the cotton wool to really get a rough textured look and to really create kind of like little dangly pieces, little hanging pieces and it's heaps easy because you can also just smoothly blend that up into the face and you just need to pretty much repeat this step all the way around the mouth until you're happy with the shape. Once the mouthpiece had dried, I went back in with the white face paint and just covered the rest of it up to make it match the rest of the face. I'm then moving on to the eyes, so I'm taking this Ben Nye grease paint and this is just the black from the center of the rainbow wheel. I'm going to start applying that into a perfect circle on each of my eyes. What I really love about Jeff the Killer is the proportions that he has on his face. He has these really small black circle eyes with this massive smile, so I really tried to keep to the character by creating these really tiny, really deep set eyes and then with the bright white contacts. After I completed that, I moved on to the mouth. So I started shading in underneath the border of the smile with the black cream. This is gonna really give it depth and make it look like it's kind of receding and it's a lot deeper of a cut than it actually is. Next, I'm taking the orange and the red color from the rainbow wheel. I'm gonna start applying this on the outer corner of the smile. I'm then gonna roughly run that along the edges of the smile as well, where there's gonna be cuts and blood. This is just gonna be a nice little base for later on when we're applying the blood on top. Taking the maroon grease paint from Ben Nye and a fine detailing paintbrush, I'm gonna start painting in the teeth. I really liked how they looked kind of cartoony in a way, so I kept with that theme. I'm just going to start drawing the lines and then filling in the little circles to create the gums. I'm then just going to put some yellow on each tooth to discolor them and make them look a little bit more creepy. I'm then just going to really messily apply some black and maroon face paint around the edges of the mouth just to give it that more grungy, more messy look and to make the cut a little bit deeper as well. Using that same black paint, I'm now just going to start outlining the teeth to give them more depth and just to make them look a little bit more realistic as well. Then I went in with my NYX Jumbo Pencil in Milk and I lined my waterline on both eyes to really make them pop. Even though I had my white contacts in, this really helped to enlarge in my eyes but still keep the deep set circles drawn in. I ended up having to apply the eyeliner with a brush because the prosthetics were so deep set I couldn't actually fit the pencil in there to line and tight line my water lines. So now we're finally up to the blood stage. I'm going in with this Mayron Coagulated Blood Gel. This is the first time I'd used this product. I picked it up from my local party store and I actually really liked it. I was really surprised at the consistency of it. The color is pretty good too. Um, for a first try I was actually really impressed. So I'm just going to start applying that super messy all over the whole entire mouth area and the edge and the border of the mouth. I wanted to just make it as sloppy as possible with some nice little drips all along the way and some on the chin as well. I was just applying it with the applicator that it came with to get a nice gooey look. I then went in with a stippling sponge to get more of a defined blood splatter, so I could say, just to really give it some texture and to really make it look a little bit more three-dimensional. To finish off this look, I'm taking some black hairspray and i seen this trick on the Pink Stylish channel. He uses it to contour and shade a lot of his makeup looks. It really gives a nice sparse gradient, so I thought I'd give it a try and I actually really love the result. So I'm going to spray all of the border of my face to give it a nice contoured look and I'm also going to bring that up into the hairline to make it nice and dark as well so you can't see my scalp. I'm then going to start contouring and shading all of the sides of my neck and my chest. I then continued on with the black hairspray and just coloured the rest of my ponytail black just to make it suit the look. I liked it a lot better than using a wig because it was my own hair and I felt like it looked a lot more authentic and genuine. So to complete the look I just went ahead and scrapped up my hair and my ponytail to look nice and crazy. So that's it guys, that is the end of my tutorial. I hope you all enjoyed my Jeff the Killer makeup look. If you did, please give this video a very big thumbs up. 
Please don't forget to tag me on Instagram if you recreate any of my looks as well. I'm starting a subscriber showcase. I've already been print screening and saving all of your work that you have already tagged me in. So please tag it at BC Showcase, all the other tags listed. I'm going to save them and put them into a big compilation video on my channel to celebrate reaching 300,000 subscribers and the fact that Halloween is coming up really soon. So again guys, thank you so much for the 300,000 subscribers. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.